Hello everyone and welcome to my very first video in DCS World where I'm just going to do some basic takeoff and landing practice in the F5E. Uh, if you're looking for a tutorial video, this is definitely not it and that is because I am not very experienced in DCS World. I've flown many different flight simulators but uh, this is a different animal and I want to respect that. Uh, of course I've already tried out a few things in here and found that it is interestingly difficult sometimes. Uh, but I don't have a lot of the modules, as you can see. The way DCS World works is you can download it for free and you get the SU-25T and the TF-51D, so uh, the Frogfoot and the trainer of the Mustang. But uh, that's actually quite a lot of content because learning those two planes can take you quite a while. Personally, I like the F5E. It is related to the T-38, which astronauts train in. And it has sort of a sleek, very aerodynamic, lightweight design, and I like that. That's my kind of plane, uh, as opposed to the flagship of the whole DCS World thing is the A-10C. It's uh, probably one of the more complicated ones. The F-5E is very simple to fly, though still somewhat challenging if you're not used to all this stuff. But the A-10C isn't really my kind of plane. It's, it's definitely suited to its purpose, without a question. But uh, this is my kind of thing. And one of my previous videos, I strapped the T-38 to the side of an Atlas booster, brought it to orbit, and brought it back down to Cape Canaveral after one orbit. So I have a certain affinity to this basic design. Anyway, so let's create a fast mission. I already did the basic uh, how to start it training. The planes I have are the A-10A, F-15C, the F-5, the MiG-29, SU-25, 27, and 33 the TF-51D, and the Huey, which is a different story altogether, which hopefully I'll get to in a subsequent video, because learning how to fly a helicopter is is a different thing. Okay, so I'm going to start from ramp, which means I have to start it up. Uh, difficulty would be hard, because if you're going to learn a plane, you're going to learn a plane. There is only one theater I have right now, the Caucasus, uh, but uh, there is there are other maps. Uh, Nevada, they're working on a Persian Gulf map. And I forget if there's another one. Anyway, but uh, let's just go with this. And it's going to give me a random livery. I don't know what exactly my colors are going to be. Okay, uh, fast mission. Got some allies. I'm not going to be doing the mission. Uh, it's made a mission. I'm starting from this best line, which is hopefully a decently long runway. Uh, but yeah. Yep. I'm just going to be taking off and landing. Okay, so here we are. And... Alright, let's take a look at our plane from the outside. Sort of desert colors. Okay. So, um, again, not a tutorial, but I'll sort of go through what I'm doing to start it up, which may be completely... Well, it's not completely wrong, otherwise it won't start, but... Battery on. Uh, that's a lot of caution lights. Let me get rid of the master caution. I think that's the master caution. Uh, generator switches and then the pumps. Now it's not on yet and that's because it doesn't have an APU. It does have the battery but it doesn't have an APU so we're going to need to have the ground crew um, start up the engines basically. Uh, give it some air. So ground crew, a ground air supply F5 and connect it. Connect ground air supply. Copy. Camera is a little bit weird sometimes. Okay, then I idle the engine and check that. Okay, so I have to tell them to apply the air supply to the left engine. Copy. And then I should see the RPM go past 10. And of course, we can also hear that. And then I can press the engine start button. And then once the left engine has gotten past 50% where the red line is, we're ready to go on to the right engine. Okay, there we are. Just say apply again. Copy. And I'll idle the engine. Okay, the engine is idle and start. Alright, well, 
now we can tell them to disconnect so that we don't drag them along with the whole thing. Pitch damper, yaw damper, uh, bring up the air brakes, set the flaps uh, to auto, and we want to zero, zero our radar altimeter, so set the pressure so that the radar altimeter is at zero. Close the canopy with control C. And it's really quiet actually, it's very quiet in here. Almost too quiet really. And then finally the elevator trim, which I'm going to set to 6 for takeoff using the hat switch. I had some problems at one point. Uh, at a certain point uh, using the hat, sw hat switch just one click it would keep pushing the uh, trim all the way to max and that was disconcerting. Very difficult to fly like that. Very difficult to fly. Um, but thankfully that was not a persistent problem. So the camera is also a little bit weird sometimes. It's because you have to click in the cockpit but also you control your camera with the mouse too so you have to switch between those two and for some reason it doesn't want to toggle to anything but my middle mouse button and wants me to double click the middle mouse button in order to toggle the view change. Anyway, I think we are all set. Air traffic control doesn't work that great around here. Alright, looks like there's a taxiway up front. And then we can turn and take off in that direction. Okay. This is not how I was supposed to taxi, but at least there aren't any other planes around. And it's not a multiplayer scenario right now. So just me as far as humans are concerned. Whoa, 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 whoa. I did not order that slide. Get back over there. I, ju I was just trying to use the brakes to slow down a bit. Okay, let's get into the cockpit. It's probably better to do this part from in here. Okay. Let's start. Our flaps are full. And throttle is full. Okay, pulling up, and gear up. Alright, we've done the easy part, even though that's not quite trivial. There's a lot of blur in the background though. I should try and reduce that. Exterior volume is quite loud. So basically it is a familiarization flight and what that basically means is there are certain things you need to be able to do without thinking too much. One of those things is not stalling the plane. Um, so I need to just get a feel for it to make sure that in critical situations I'm not going to stall it. And that would be a good thing. And just in general get a feel for what its limitations are where it's going to go bad. Once we take off we don't need that much elevator trim nor that much thrust. I guess we are going to, well we took off uh, westward so we're gonna do a turn to the south. Well I'm breathing heavily there so that means that the g-forces were, were serious. I don't see a g-meter here We are we are already at five thousand feet. Not the most inspiring landscape right now. Okay, so we should be parallel to the runway. 
Let's check our map. Oh, that's F10. Okay, so where are we? Well, I think that's us. I can't imagine there are too many F5s around. All the action seems to be over here, so if we wanted to get into trouble, that's where we'd go. Now, can I even see the airfield? With everything rather snowy, you'd think it'd sort of stand out. Okay, we're getting a little bit slow here. And indeed, I felt the plane tugging a little bit. Well, I think that I see the runway there, so that's good. I have to say, the runways in DCS world aren't always as obvious as they are in, say, X-Plane 11. My goal is to come to a complete stop and then take off again. Seems like I'm coming in a little bit too low. Well, the auto flaps don't seem to be flapping. Ah, there we go. Now they're doing it. I had to lower the landing gear, apparently. It feels like I'm carrying a lot of weight. The plane can definitely land at lower velocities, but only if you're not heavily laden. This is a very heavily laden swallow right now. Oh, oh, I'm coming down too far past. Oh. Oh, I'm not doing it very well. Ah, ow, ow, that hurt. Okay, wheel brakes. Now I'm not using my speed brakes. Uh, oh, the oh, wheel steering, please. Ah no 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 ow ow hmm right well that wasn't very nominal was it but I guess the question is did I bust it so bad that I can't take off again well there's only one way to find out it doesn't seem like anything is smoking. So that's good. We're going to do a quick turnaround here. Maybe we should fly to a different airport. I don't like that this doesn't have any taxiways on this side. Bit too shabby. Okay, back to the cockpit. All right, looks like we're lined up. Let's go. Very nice. And up, 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 up. Okay, gear up. Wait till I have to learn how to use the weapon systems. We're not anywhere near there yet. Okay, so let's see where we should fly to. Uh, maybe we should experience how how crazy this area is. In which case, let's let's cross a significant part of the map and head to this mineral naivoti. I don't even know if that's a uh, airfield that I would be allowed to land at or whether I'll be shot immediately. Not sure. But that looks like we need to head uh, northwest. And let's pitch down here. Maybe we should go high and fast to see how this thing performs. Let me try and climb to like 20, 30,000 feet. Get a good look at the landscape. We've got a long trip after all. 
Now with high settings it is recommended to run this off of an SSD. I am not running it off of an SSD right now. I think perhaps some of the newer maps like the Nellis Air Force Base one probably is more graphically intense than this the original map, the Caucus map. You can tell fairly easily when we activate the afterburner by looking at the fuel flow gauge. You can see uh, right now about uh, 3,000 pounds per hour and then if I just nudge the throttle a little bit and then it jumps to 6,000 almost and that's why I'm keeping it no no no, no uh, just under the afterburner right there. I'm sort of interested in seeing if uh, we can reduce the blur at all and also in cockpit well you can see my volume over here is fairly low uh, maybe the world volume is what I need to maybe here like in helmet I don't know if that's a good thing or not um, system tree visibility no it doesn't look like I can adjust most of the visual settings while in game but this is what I've got it at high high medium high ultra visibility range which I like there's no heat blur there is a depth of field though I should probably check out what my frame rate actually is I mean it's fine for me but I know you guys generally expect higher frame rates why are my flaps down anyway I expect higher frame rates than I normally do you know, I, I don't... Maybe I should turn off the auto flap. Map-wise, we are... We are currently here. So let's go flat west, and then that should take us over... Well, there might be a chance I'll get shot down, so... That'll be fun. I've activated afterburners. Much fuel flow. I wonder how to jettison the drop tanks. That's a good question. Okay, Mach point 0.8. I'm just curious about what happens when we break the sound barrier in this game. Now in X-Plane 11, when I do that with the FA-18, it pitches down pretty severely. Because it hits a lot of drag. But what happens here? We may have to go higher to actually break Mach 1. Current location... Well, over friendly forces right now. This isn't exactly the easiest plane to break the sound barrier in. I think it only goes up to Mach 1.5. And probably at higher altitudes than we currently are at right now. The red mark is at 700 knots indicated airspeed though, so I'm not going to overstress the airframe. And that's one good thing about the T-38 and the F-5E is that uh, they, they did have a lot more room for uh, improvement on their speed. Structurally they were able to take much more than the engines were able to deliver. One reason why I thought it was a good choice for an adaptation for a space shuttle. Okay, but it doesn't seem like I'm going much faster than Mach 0.9 this time around. I'll try more extreme measures at a later date, but I'm gonna try and make it to that airbase. Well, I'm not seeing it right now. Should be directly to my right soon. Got a good town here. Hmm. But if there is uh, some sort of airfield here, I'm sure not seeing it. I feel like I'm going too slow. Nope, no I'm not. 
The engines... Oh, shoot. Uh, apparently, the engines have stopped. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Well, I've learned something new about the F5E. You can't throttle down that low, apparently. Um... Uh, I tried to put the flaps down and that hasn't worked by pressing F and I still don't see the airfield. What does the map say? It says I'm basically flying right towards it, but... Hmm, could have fooled me. Okie dokie. Well... I think it can't put the flaps down is the problem. That would certainly explain the situation. I wonder if I could start the plane right now. I mean, there is air going through the thing, but this might not be the best time to do. check that out. Uh, it's shuddering. I need to land. It's stalling because it doesn't have the flaps and I'm slower than its stall speed. We're basically falling like a brick. Maybe some kind of leaf. Out. Whoa. Okay. Um, right. Well, our, uh, Artificial horizon there is upside down right now. Pretty sure everything's dead. Let's see what it looks like from outside. Well, I didn't do too bad, I mean, an emergency landing, if you will. Except that the landing gear obviously buckled. I don't know if it was fully extended, actually. I don't know if the hydraulic systems were working with the engines basically goners. Um, but as far as losing parts, I don't know what those little scraps on the ground are, but I don't think they're from me. So, I'll call it an okay job, but I'm gonna have to watch out for that sudden engine shutdown due to uh, idling the engines thing. Oh, wait, those little parts all disappeared. Okay, well, here I am. I don't think I can start the engines again. Wait, what, what happens if I try to contact ground crew? Request repair. Do you think they'll repair it all the way out here? Request repair. No. How about if I ask them to connect the ground air supply? Chief, connect ground air supply. Oh, so no. Okay, so, yeah, that, that will only happen in an airfield. Always good to check, though, you know. You never know. All right, so, well, I'm stranded here for now, and we'll leave it here. Oh, I should have anti-ice on, probably. They didn't go through that in t the tutorial, but the weather looks like I probably should have had the pitot heat and the engine anti-ice switch on. I don't know if that's why our engine quit on us. Or whether it was because I had idled him. Well, that will be the subject of much experimentation. But for now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.